welcome back continuing from my last video uh, we had to figure out uh, the relationship between t which was the number of tiles and uh, n which was a pattern number so yeah the first pattern is has got five tiles the second has got 11 the third is 19 and so on so in the last uh, video i explained how you can find the relation between t and n uh, I told you a way to find a quadratic pattern. We could figure out this is a quadratic pattern because the first difference is not constant. The second difference is constant. So we say this is a quadratic pattern. And then we saw how uh, you can figure out this is a quadratic pattern by looking at the second difference. So, so this is where we stopped. So we said uh, the relation between t and n should be n squared plus 3 n plus 1. I also showed it on a calculator. So now we had to uh, answer the question uh, that uh, when t is 461, the question was when uh, Allison had 461 tiles, the question was what is n or uh, which pattern number would uh, give you 461 tiles? Okay, now this is this has become an algebraic uh, question. So, so the question is t is 461, and we know t is equal to n n squared plus 3 n plus 1. This is what we saw in the last video. So now we have to solve this uh, solve. So now what I've done is I've substituted t as 461 in place of t. So I wrote 461 is equal to 3 n squared plus 3 n plus 1. Now I want to get rid of this 461 from this side. So I took away 461 from this side. So I have to also take away from the other side. So this and this gets cancelled. And you get a 0 here. So 0 is equal to n squared plus 3 n. And 1 take away 461 is 460. So now this has become a quadratic equation. So you have to f figure out two factors of minus 460, which adds to give you a 3. So I know 23 times negative 20 gives me negative 460, which is this number. And if I add them, that is 23 plus negative 20, which gives me 3, which is this number. So the factors would be these. Uh, n plus 23, which is from here, and the second factor would be n minus 20. Now, this is, uh, this tells me that this equation or the product, this is a number and this is a number. So if the product of two numbers is equal to zero, you can understand logically that this has to be a zero or this has to be zero. So I'm setting this is equal to zero so when n plus 23 is a 0, n has to be negative 23. You can understand logically because negative 23 plus 23 gives you 0. And when you set this equal to 0, that is n minus 20 equal to 0, n has to be 20 because 20 minus 20 is 0. Now, this is a very important step to get excellence. You have to justify, you have to only accept the appropriate answer. Now, negative 23 cannot be appropriate or does, is not appropriate in this situation because n is the pattern number. So pattern number can't be negative. It has to be greater than 0. So this is the most, or this is the only appropriate answer. So n is 20. And it's always good to check. Now, what was our formula? T is n squared plus 3n plus 1. So I can put the value of 20 in this. So if I put the value of 20 to check whether our answer is right, so 20 squared in place of n squared plus 3 times 20 plus 1. So 20 squared is 400, 3 times 20 is 60 plus 1. So you can be very happy you got the answer and you can give yourself 5 stars. Okay, I also told you that... Uh, you can check this on a calculator uh, in two different ways. First, I'll show you how to do this uh, on the table menu. So, mm, 
Oh, dann halt. Okay. So, yeah. Mm, so, let me go to menu. Uh, table. Where is table? Yeah, here it is. And my equation is x squared plus 3 x plus 1. Okay. And I'll set from 1 to 20. And 20 would should give me 461. So let me scroll down. Here we go. When n is 20 or x is 20, t is 461. Okay. Now I'll show you how to do this. Uh, um, okay. Now there is a coming way of doing this without going through all because but the problem is uh, not the problem for this question as this is an excellent question uh, you have to show these words uh, or you will not get excellence but it's always good to know the answer and then do the working so i'll show you also a way to get the answer and then then do the working okay so what you do is you have to Mm. You have to go to your stats menu, and I will. You, I, I can't explain all the details, but I'll just show you. So I'll enter one, two, and three. So execute, and in list two, I'll enter phi. Uh, when the first pattern had phi, mm, the second pattern had phi plus six is eleven and uh, 11 plus 8 is 19. So first you enter this and then you have to graph it. So what, we, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the scatter plot. Okay, the calculator will draw the scatter plot. So I'll go to graph and look at the setup. So it's in scatter, so your x list is in list 1 and your y list is in list 2. You should confirm this and then graph it. So the calculator has drawn the scatter plot. Now I'll ask the calculator to give me the equation of a line or a curve joining these. I already know this is a quadratic equation, so I'll say calculate, and this is a quadratic equation. There we go. This is my A is 1, B is 3, C is, uh, C is 1. Okay, and then I can copy this onto a graph menu. So if this is called copy, F5. Uh, execute F5. So then you go to your graph menu uh, and I will type this. You have to type in my calculator, I have to type this again. So that is x squared plus 3x plus 1. My scale, I'm going from say 0 to 25. And uh, scale of phi doesn't matter. Uh, execute. Don't worry about the dot. I'll go from 0 to 500. Scale of 10 would do. And then draw it. So here's my curve. It's a parabola. And then I'll go G solve. And I'll find, I want to find Y is 461. Or I want to find X. So I'll go. F2, they're asking you what's the Y value. I'll type in 461, and it will give me 20. Here we go. When X is 20, Y is 461. So this is a way in which you can check your answer on the graphic calculator. Thank you very much.